Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vim PF, and on today's episode, we've got something a little special that's come over to me from the Mark Littler channel. Now, as you guys know, I talk about Mark a lot. Um, he does these awesome things where he does a bit of a round robin on some of the uh, the great bottles that he gets, uh, where he uh, talks about the investment and the purchasing side of the whiskies, uh, and then he passes it on to the reviewers, and it goes around and around and around, and everyone gets to try a little bit of some stuff that they wouldn't ordinarily get to try. I've got to try things like the Yamazaki... Uh, 1980s, which I covered fairly recently and did a barbecue video on, which is pretty cool. Uh, today, I've got this uh, Bimba release, which slipped through my fingers, and I'm sure if you're watching this, it probably slipped through yours as well, because there aren't many bottles of this around. And this is a Bimba release in collaboration with TFL Travel for London. The initial release was four stations, and they only had a few hundred bottles each. This is the King's Cross St Pancras. They also had things like Baker Street, Waterloo and Oxford Circus. Now, uh, the other thing I'll say before I get into this itself is that they're um, about to release another four. And when I say about, I don't actually know specifically when they're going to release it. But if you're watching this on release, they've got the information on the website and you have to kind of sign up to their Bimba Club with a K to get more information. It's going to be um, Victoria, London Bridge, Chancery Lane and Paddington. So yeah, another four station. Now they've got hundreds to choose from, so uh, if they keep this thing going, there's going to be a lot of them. Now some of the things I'm going to talk about in this episode are really, and I should say right up front, if you're new to this channel, my ethos is uh, the taste versus the cost, therefore equal equaling the value in my opinion. So when I get into this, and you'll see why I've mentioned that up front, uh, when I get into this, take that in mind because... Um, I would wager most of people who have bought this bottle are kind of collecting it to get more of a set. I very much doubt that the majority of people have bought this to drink it. If you have, then kudos to you because you, you know that's why you should join my channel because that's what I'm all about, opening bottles, trying the liquid inside, seeing if it's any good and if it's worth that money. So let's talk about a bit more about this particular bottle versus the other three in the first release. Uh, the important thing to know is the Baker Street was the only one of the four that was selected by the Bimba Club tasting panel. The other three uh, were just the other casks, I think. I'm, I'm, you know, someone correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure they were just sort of four casks to choose from, and they released them all anyway, basically. So um, I haven't tried the other three. Don't know anything about them at all, apart from that they're the kind of similar ex-bourbon cask vibes going on about. These are all single cask, by the way, as well. Uh, and of course, I've covered a few Bimbas on the channel now, and they sell out pretty quickly, and they explode on the secondary market, and Bimba themselves have a big problem with um, controlling that, basically. Uh, I think they tried something new with this as a release, and it was um, mostly successful. Uh, you could only pick up one per person, and I'm not talking about one of the four, I'm talking about one. So um, although it was geared towards... Um, steering away from the secondary market, I have to say that that was a, a bit of a, a, a not a great choice, let's say, because um, you know people that are going to collect it, they're going to get the one of them, and then they're going to want the other three, so they're going to have to go to the secondary market for that, or they're going to have to enlist their friends and stuff like that. But you know, whatever, it's a really difficult thing for Bimba to uh, to lock down because they've become so popular so quickly, and I have to say hype is where it's due because the liquid is ordinarily very very good indeed and the, the bottles i have tried in the past have been exceptional for the for the price like a great example was the peated i got that for 65 quid something like that maybe a bit more i can't remember exactly now uh, and astounding whiskey astounding whiskey for its age and not even just for its age it just is astounding whiskey i digress a bit I'm trying to give you a bit of background into bimba um before we get into the actual whiskey this one then is the King's Cross St Pancras. Uh, come around from Mark. This has been to Moa already at Swedish Whiskey Girl. So she's done a review of it. Mark's done his investment side of things for it. Um, I'm going to pass this on to the next person and so on, so on. So if you want to see differing opinions from mine, please do go and check them out. I think Mark's going to set up a playlist, but it's obviously going to take a few months for it to roll out in its entirety. But definitely go and check other people's opinions out. Um, don't get mad at me for my opinion as we get into this bad boy. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, these are all single cask. I'm not sure if they cast strength. This one's um, 58.5, and a few of them are around at 58. They, they might have cut it down a little, but it might be cast strength as well. Not sure. Non-chill filtered, natural coloured, all the things we like. All four of these are ex-bourbon casks. 
Now, they've been famed for their kind of cask choices. Uh, so some of the finishes that they've been doing and some of the photo maturations in different cask choices have been really, really good. The secondary market on this thing now has um, died down a little bit, let's say. Um, if you've been following Bimba, you'll notice that obviously these sold out within minutes and then they were on secondary market the next day for about sort of 500 pounds. Now they're back down to that sort of 180, 200 pound mark. So if you were looking to pick up a bottle of these, it might be worth looking into it now because the bit of the craziness has died down a little bit. It's still a little bit high, but yeah, anyway, let's get onto the nose and see what we've got then, shall we? Okay, so one last thing I will say before we get into the nose properly is that this really benefits from being left out in the open for a, a good long while. Um, I did a, a few glasses of this in preparation for this video, tried it with a bit of water, and um, I found that although water does help bring that down a bit quicker, it's at its best when you leave it for a good half an hour on the side to really air out and get rid of those initial kind of really harsh vibes. I think there's a, a little bit of harshness to this when you first get it out of the bottle. Okay, then let's have a good look properly. So once those initial heavy alcohols have gone, I'm left with the notes of kind of creamy toffee, vanillas, bags of oak. Nothing too unexpected for a kind of ex-bourbon cask. Quite pleasant. Very strong, very strong. And that's coming from me. You know, I like my cast strength whiskey. I like my high ABV whiskey. And for me, it's it's got a very strong nose on it. Let's try on the palate. Mm -hmm. It's very lively. It's got a, a very short, fruity tropical note at the front. And then it's just absolutely dominated by a really high strength alcohol, black peppery finish. And I don't mean that negatively per se. It's uh, it's very tasty and it's it's just very bold, very bold indeed. Mm. The finish is medium long, very spicy and a little bit drying on the back end. And again, don't mean that particularly negatively, just a tasted note. So yeah, uh, finally, let's talk about the value then. So like I said earlier, the taste versus the cost equals the value of the whiskey, in my opinion. Might not necessarily mirror your opinion. Now, personally, um, I think that um, although Bimba typically have been excellent for me, I think this is dropping off a little bit. Just to put that right out there, I think it's dropping off a little bit. Um, it's not as interesting as some of the other releases I've tried and certainly not as interesting as some of the cheaper options that they had. Uh, a couple of years ago at least but you know those kind of 60 pound marker releases they're putting out all very interesting don't know the exact age of this all we've got on here is the uh, the um, bottle date rather than the distilled date but we're going to assume it's a kind of roughly that kind of three to four year age mark i don't think they're going to be going any any older than that they might do i'm not sure so yeah the quality i don't think is really there for this so let's take out the the tfl uh, branding entirely and just talk about the liquid inside the bottle 100% it's not worth £125 and it's definitely not worth anything that you're paying on the secondary market. That said, of course, the, pe the majority of the people that are buying it on the secondary market will be buying to collect and not to drink. And that's a whole different story that you should go and check out Mark's Channel 4 because that's something I don't really get into. It probably is worth it for that sort of thing. You know, if you're looking just to collect and get the whole set, sure, you know, whatever, it's going to be probably worth a lot of money when the whole set is complete. I don't know. I don't know that sort of thing. It's not really my vibe. But if we're talking about just the whiskey inside the bottle versus the cost that you'd have to pay to get it right now, it's an absolute no-go from me. Um, there are far better, far better Bimba releases out there. Uh, and if you're spending that sort of money in the, in the hundreds and multiple hundreds, there are far better other whiskies out there than this one itself. And again, I don't mean that as a slight to Bimba as well, because they're making truly excellent whiskies. I just don't think this is it.